In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the very first available custom firmware option for the all new Ambernic RG Cube XX. This is called Newly. I'm going to spell it on screen here because it is a little bit confusing on how to pronounce this. I had to ask somebody on the team because I always butcher it. I try to pronounce it all wrong, but I guess it's named after some type of insect or something, which makes sense because I'm pretty sure that Newly is built on top of or at least is some sort of fork to Botocera. And Botocera has been around for a very long time in the retro gaming community. So it's something I'm very familiar with and have grown to love. It uses emulation station as its front end, which is what we're looking at here, which is a very clean, usable interface for a handheld, and it just works really well. Now, one thing that I noticed pretty much right away when I booted into Newly was this amazing menu background music we have going on. I'm not sure if it's being picked up by my microphone right now, but I'm gonna put the device up to the mic so that way you can kind of listen to what I'm hearing here because it's very cool. Now I know background music and menu music is not for everybody. Of course you could turn it off if you don't like it. I think for now I'm gonna leave it on. I don't see any reason why I should turn it off. It's really relaxing and sounds good. Before we get into testing some games, I did wanna see if I could get into the system settings and change the RGB. If you go under tools, there's one option and it says RGB settings. I noticed that my joysticks all of a sudden had turned red earlier and it had me wondering if this was functioning properly. So. I go in here and select a color. It doesn't really look like it's doing anything, but maybe it won't do anything until we exit out. And then brightness, let's see if brightness is working. Okay, yeah, brightness is working, so that's interesting. So I don't know if the color selector is currently functioning. Let's see if we go over to the modes, if it will allow us to change the modes, if that will do anything. So this is called mono rainbow, but that doesn't seem to be very much of a rainbow. Same thing with multi rainbow. Let's hit exit and see if maybe exiting finalizes the changes or anything. Yeah, no, it does not appear to have done anything other than change the brightness. So maybe that's something that they have to work at in a further update of the build. Another thing I noticed was there was no battery icon over here telling me what percentage battery I had left, which is kind of scary when you think about it, especially if you don't wanna lose your game progress or something. Uh, so I decided to dig into the system settings because I am familiar with emulation station. I figured maybe it's somewhere in here. And if you click this first tab here underneath where it says information, if you actually scroll down, it'll tell you your battery percentage. And I'm actually at 4%, which means I need to plug this thing and charge it. I'm wondering if that's why my joysticks have turned red and wouldn't let me change the color. So let me plug this in for a little bit. And then when I get back to recording, I will see if that has made any sort of difference. All right, I've gone ahead and thrown the device on the charger just for a few minutes, just to see what happened as it kind of topped up. And as you can see here, we are now at 11% battery and the joystick RGB color is now yellow. So my guess is that the RGB color is somewhat an indicator of your charge level. I'm wondering if we get to 100%, if then we'll be able to change the color to whatever we like. Um, but for now, we're gonna get into some games and kind of just see how this thing plays games because I'm sure that's what most people wanna see. And one of the first systems I wanted to take a peek at here was Dreamcast. Now, when I go to boot up Dreamcast, I'm gonna get a warning that I haven't transferred over my BIOS yet and the game may not work properly. Now, you're gonna get this warning anytime that you don't have the proper BIOS for the proper system in your SD card all set up. Now, on a system by system basis, this may make the games not work or they may function completely fine. It's going to be a little bit of trial and error. It's always best just to have the appropriate BIOS for all of your cores. In the case of this, I think we're using the Flycast core inside of RetroArch, so I don't think we need it. Um, and booting into this, I can see that it's automatically already scaled at a 4-3 aspect ratio. But because we have this wonderful one by one screen on a lot of the home consoles, I don't mind stretching it just a bit to get the most screen real estate possible. So if you hit the mode button and the B button, that's gonna pull up your retro arc menu and you can go back once, go down to settings. And then if you go to video under scaling, it's gonna say core provided. Now you can go over to eight by seven and I'm not gonna save an override right now just cause I'm just showing you, but it'll get you a little bit more screen space. All right, so here we are in Marvel vs. Capcom. It seems like all the buttons are properly mapped. If not, though, if you ever wanted to change something, you could 
hit that mode button and the B button like I showed you before to go in and kind of change your control scheme and whatever you want for what works best. Um, but yeah, so far Dreamcast looks like it's working good. We're not really pushing it with a crazy 3D game right now, but this is just one of my favorite games to play on here. And if you hold menu and start and any of the games that you're in, it should exit you back out to the front end. Next thing I wanted to check out on the device was Pico 8. Some other people at the team have installed newly onto their Cube XXs to give it a test. And one of them told me they were having an issue with one of the games, Buns Bunny Survivor, which is kind of like a vampire survivor clone. And it's a lot of fun. But he said that when he was playing, he had an issue where sometimes when you'd push the down key, it would kind of get stuck and then just keep pushing the down key. So I thought maybe I would take a peek at this game here first to see if I could replicate his issue. He said it was happening pretty much all the time right away. So, so far, I'm not seeing that to be an issue here. We did install these all on our own separately. So maybe it had something to do with the way it was installed, but I'm excited because Pico 8 is probably the number one system I've been playing on the cube since it came out because it works so well with that one by one aspect ratio. Also, if you're a fan of Vampire Survivor, you should definitely take a look at this game. It's a lot of fun. I find it to be actually really difficult sometimes compared to Vampire Survivor. There's a few different aspects to it that are a little different. You have like a dashing mechanic where you can kind of dash out of harm's way. And as your hair comes back into full color, you can dash again. Um, so this power up I got here allows me to kind of dash and do stun damage, which is pretty neat. And then another different mechanic is you use carrots as your main weapon here. And you can't spam them as much as you want because you only have a finite amount of them until they recharge. So the game can get pretty dicey at times. Now, the next Pico 8 game that we're going to try is Celeste. I hate testing this game, but everybody always wants to see it. And I'm so bad at it. I never played this game when it first came out. Uh, I think it was actually originally released as a Pico 8 game first and then became like a full fledged indie game elsewhere but I just wanted to see if there were any other games where I could replicate any sort of control issues. Uh, and so far everything's working good, so that's good. Now, the next thing that I wanted to test on here was actually Portmaster. When I had my original Pow Kitty RGB 30, I actually loved playing Stardew Valley on Portmaster. And so I tried to copy over those files that I had from that version to see if I could get them to work on here. Hopefully it'll work and I even get to keep my save files because that would be amazing. Now, when you do launch this, don't panic as it does take a long time to get going once you launch it. So I'm just gonna let this sit here for a second and we will cut back once it's actually booted up. Okay, so here we are. It looks like it worked. Now the moment of truth is gonna be to see if I actually have that save file. Now it wasn't a game that I got super far in. I just made one as an example just to see if it would actually transfer over when I moved the game files. And it looks like it did, which is amazing. Now, Stardew Valley might be a little bit hard to see on here. The text might be a little bit small for some people to read, but once this gets loaded in, I will show you, you can actually scale the UI quite nicely with this four inch display and it'll make it a bit easier to read. The one thing I've noticed though, is the loading to get into the game, both in the initial loading screen and when you first boot into your save file can be a little long. Um, but yeah, as you can see, this is Stardew Valley. It's running, the controls are already mapped perfectly fine. Now, if we go over and hit the start menu and go up over to the top here, we should have options and we should be able to scale the UI a little larger. Go under graphics, VSync, and then, so it's at a hundred percent. If you bring this up to like 130, maybe 140%, it makes the game a lot easier to see the icons and read all the text. And you could definitely play through the whole game like this. I've put many hours into playing Stardew Valley on Portmaster and it's a really fun experience. Now, one game I love to port over any chance I get with Portmaster is the original Half-Life. It's one of my absolute favorite games and it's always fun to see it on new and unique devices. And it seems like it works pretty good on here. I haven't figured out setting up all the controls in a way that makes sense for this device, but it's fun to do. Now you do have to own a legal copy of this game, just like you do any of the paid games that are on Portmaster, but you can usually pick this game up for like a buck on a Steam sale. And it's cool that this little device in my hand actually probably has better specs than the PCs that this released on at the time. Actually, in fact, I know that it has better specs than all that, but still really interesting to take a look at and this does support more systems than you're seeing here on screen 
any of the emulators that I don't have games transferred over to aren't going to have like their own little folder here in the front end. So as you add your own games, more systems will pop up. You will have to go into the game settings and update your games list for them to show up. Uh, but this has been a first look at Newly. I think that it's really pretty. I think that the music is really nice. I like the emulation station front end. Compatibility so far seems to be pretty good with everything that I've tested. I'm still waiting on a few more features like maybe an actual battery indicator and still need to test this with things like Wi-Fi and retro achievements and maybe even perhaps the HDMI out. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for a full release. Should be coming soon. So far, like I said, I, I think it shows lots of promise. I know that people kind of get a little bummed out that we're getting so many Ambernix with the same chipset, but look how quickly we're able to put custom firmware on these devices because of it. So thank you guys so much for checking out today's video. Make sure you subscribe, comment down below anything you want to see on this device, and we will try to make some more videos on it in the following weeks. Uh, and thank you so much for checking it out.